yoga is more than just the postures, which is what a lot of people think. Which is what I thought that it all, like that's all that it entails, but there's way more than that. Um, so, you know, it's all about that. Yeah, definitely. Cause <laughs> I've, the only time that I've done yoga is on the Sunday classes at the art pack. Yeah. And occasionally with family when we travel. And I feel like it's, I get a different experience depending on the yoga teacher, but they all include breathing in some way. Mm -hmm. So if you could talk about how it, like yoga is more than just those poses. Yeah. yeah. So traditionally there's thought to be eight limbs of yoga and they're called, there's the yamas, which are like restraints, moral discipline, moral values. And then there's niyamas, which are positive duties or observances, asana, which is what typically we think of yoga. So it's like one and like downward dog, all of those. Right. And then pranayama, that's breathing. So that's the breathing techniques. And then pratyahara is called sense withdrawal. So that's more of like focusing in on one thing. So like focusing in on the breath or something. And then pratyahara leads into these next few, which are dhyana. Dhyana. I hope I'm not screwing these up. But that's focused concentration. So say you are really focused concentrating on your breath and then from concentration leads to dhyana which is meditative absorption so like you are so in this moment and then they all lead into this notion of samadhi which is just bliss and so everyone has like this inner core of bliss and yoga is all of these different things involved so that we peel back the layers so that we can come to our most inner self which is just that specific yoga practice, or is that yoga? That's yoga as a whole. I feel like a part of that also is that you kind of are supposed to carry it forward through the rest of your day afterwards. Like, it's not supposed to end the class. It's supposed to be something that, like, you carry with you the feeling that you have at the end of the yoga class until the next one you take. Yeah. That's always how I felt. Do you so, ever do that? Yeah, so, like, I have a couple of the yamas written down because I've been teaching them in class. So the first three that I've written down here are truth. So that's just being honest with yourself, being honest with other people. And then there is a him or himza, which is nonviolence, it's peace, being peaceful with other people. And then there is the staya, which is non-stealing and non-evaluating. And then um, there's more, but I don't really have them written down. I think those are like similar, the same, both stealing and what was, what was the other one? Stealing. Nonviolence. No, you said truth. truth. In the same, you said them like side by side as a third yama. Yes. Um, non stealing, non devaluing. Non stealing and non devaluing. Yeah, is devaluing like a similar thing as stealing? Stealing yeah. attention or something? So stealing. it's it's like essentially like thinking like stealing like someone's value or anything. They're yeah. a little hard for me to wrap my brain around. Like I'm like, oh, they're so simple. And then I try to explain them. I'm like, they're really not that simple. But um, it's kind of like if you think of like stealing value away from yourself and you can do it in really simple ways of like comparing yourself to other people or constantly being like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, like apologizing for yourself and not like allowing yourself to just be as you are. Do you think that a lot of that comes from America? I've heard that Americans are, we have a very competitive culture. Mm -hmm. So like a constant need to compare ourselves to other people. Yeah, and like before I practiced yoga, like, I was such a competitive person, like, I was on Instagram, like, comparing my feed, comparing myself, like, comparing my body, like, everything to other people, and, like, when I first started yoga practice, I went into it, like, oh, like, can I touch my toes, can I do this pose, can I do this, this person next to me is doing that, and my yoga teacher kept being, like, you, the only thing that matters is you, like, you are on your own path, do not worry about other people, like, they're worried about themselves, worry about you. And that was like the first like aha moment that I had where I was like, oh, okay, like I don't need to have this competitive like sense to myself. Yeah, that's fair, especially in America in that there are very few places where there is such big industry in every single place that you go. Mm -hmm. And like people are just moving so fast, I feel like, compared to other places of the world, which is why something like meditation, at least for me, has really allowed myself to really such a fast moving, fast paced place. Do you remember why you first started meditating or like when it was? Ah, I wish I did, honestly. I feel like 
it was definitely from downloading Headspace because it was cool having someone walk me through it and not having to do it on my own because it allowed me to see how other people would do it first before trying to do it on my own. But um, honestly, I know the time that I did it the most is when I was in Hawaii. I would do it like 10 times longer than I otherwise would have in Columbus just because it, like, I don't know why, but it felt so much more effective in that type of environment than in a city that is in the middle of a farm. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I feel like in a city is where we need that, like, meditative aspect the most in our lives, like, where we're fast paced and, like, constantly being bombarded with so much, like, <laughs> so much stuff, yeah. We're constantly stimulated. Um, but in Hawaii, like, it would be so easy to just, like, drop into, like, that meditative state. Yeah. I feel like when I go on vacation, I find the same thing, that I just, like, have the time to do so much longer meditation. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and other things, too, obviously. But meditating in general, like, you do have the time, and you're in a place where it'd be more enjoyable, too. What, what were you going to say? Do you remember when you, and how you first got into yoga? Yeah, so it's a really funny story. My mom loves the Wall Street Journal and was reading it, and they had a story about like yoga teachers and how it's like this booming industry that um, it's just blown up so much. My mom was like, "Have you ever thought about like becoming a yoga teacher?" And I was like, "I've literally never practiced yoga, like other than the one odd time in my life, like I've never done it." She's like, "I really feel like you'd enjoy it," so I called her crazy, and then. Um, my life kind of came to like a halt. I didn't have anything planned the summer after my freshman year, and I felt really lost. So my mom one day was just like, hey, like, want to try this yoga class with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. And like I said, I was really competitive, really deeply unhappy, like probably the most depressed I've ever been. So I went to that first yoga class, and I like felt this really strange sense of peace because she kept reminding me, like, you just worry about you don't worry about other people like wherever you are on your path is like where you are that's a really big thing is like be exactly where you are don't try to change anything and I fell in love with that I fell in love with the feeling I fell in love with the peace that I found and so every single day for that summer I went to yoga and then by August I was like hey I want to learn more how can I learn more and they're like hey have you ever thought about like doing a teacher training program like that's so weird because my mom wanted me to do it and so then I um yeah. it's like 200 hours they teach you to stand straight what do you think was the biggest thing that you took away from spending 200 hours trying to learn how to like show that to other people we really focused on finding peace within ourselves and coming to terms with like our traumas and coming to terms with just ourselves and how messy life can be but how in the middle of all of that you can find peace and that is something that I have taken with me every single day and like today I was going like on an anxious spiral and it was so hard to like draw myself out of that and just be in the moment and understand like these waves are going to come like these moments are going to come but like at my core I am bliss and so I need to just like find that again. So like a large part of the natural Ohio following is people from Columbus so like how could they take I right now only teach one class a week at the Art Pack, but I'm often at Heartfelt Yoga Studio in Columbus. It's on Fifth Avenue. Owned by a girl that I did teacher training with. I love the values of the studio. Um, hopefully, I'll start teaching at a studio soon, and if I do, I'll let you know. I just cool. am very busy right now. Sure, no. This is definitely, hopefully, something that people could get value out of, I feel like, especially taking five minutes just to appreciate that. Because I think so often you look around and so many people who evidently don't enjoy their days when it's plausible to, like you can if you wish to. You have the power yeah. within you. Everything that you do is completely in your control. Every experience that you wish to have is in your control. Cool. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. That was fucking awesome. Great outro. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, solid stuff.